Father, I thank you for this word today, Father. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Spirit of wisdom and revelation, God, the knowledge of you. Father God, let your truth come. Father God, lead us into everything that we do and say, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, let us be delivered from the, from, from the ways of man and the ways of, of, of religion and tradition, God, and into your Holy Spirit and truth. We invite you here, Spirit of truth, right now. Father, we thank you for the cross and the blood of Jesus and the Spirit of truth that rests upon us and in us and comes out of us, Father. We thank you that we partner with you, Holy Spirit, today. Speak what you want to say to your bride, to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father, open our eyes, God, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come to give us life and life more abundantly, Father God. And I just come against the enemy of peace and joy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing and are going to do from this day forward in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message, in my spirit for a couple, little while now, a couple weeks or so, but God gave the message for this, the title for this message is called, um, John the Baptist and the Maverick Spirit. See, we have blueprints, and we have a new covenant, church. And a lot of people are coming against the apostolic reformation because of the type of people and the different things that are mixed into all that. But at the same time, God's apostles and prophets are coming against all the different things. But God is um, restoring or wants to reset what He has started. He doesn't want to change it. He's only resetting it or re um, establishing what was already been established. And because a lot of things that have been added on, and so we have a lot of people out there that think they can re reinvent the wheel, or they think they can uh, throw the baby away with the dirty bath water, and this is not going to happen. I'm going to be reading right now from Matthew 3. And I'm going to get into the heart of what this message is about. It's for many people that are probably going to listen. And God's going to direct them to hear this so they can repent and be blessed. In the days of John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is what was spoken by Eli Elijah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. And the same came John had his raiment, camel's hair, and a leather girdle, and about his loins, and his meat was locusts and honey. Then went him out to Jerusalem and Judea and the regions round about and about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the baptisms, he said unto them, You generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits of fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, and we say unto you that God is able to turn these stones and raise up children of Abraham. And we say today, people say, Don't think you need don't need to repent just because you say we're a Christian or we go to church or we're this denomination, or we're part of that, or we're a Baptist, or God's saying God can make any of those things happen. But bring forth fruits, meat for repentance, and think not. Because he, now, John, is saying God is coming at this point to that old covenant. And people always think God's coming to the church and going to ax it all down. But he established it, and he has not made a third covenant. So we got to be really careful of how we present ourselves and carry ourselves and, and try to become our own little John the Baptist in our own minds, which we see all through media and different places. I'm going to elaborate on the reasons and the why these things, and we see these things, and why they're happening. 
the axe is laid to the root of the trees. That's the root of the trees because God was planning up the New Testament through Jesus Christ of the church, which we'll get into that in a minute. And cast into the fire. Indeed, baptize, I indeed baptize you unto repentance, but one is coming after you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is his hand, and who will thoroughly purge his floor, his floor, and gather his wheat into his garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And we know that God is an all-consuming fire. In Hebrews 12, it talks about his consuming fire and consuming everything that's not of him, and he's shaking everything that can be shaken. And he says this, But John forbid him, saying, I have indeed baptized of thee, Come unto me. And Jesus came to him to be baptized. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be now so, or so now. For thus is becometh fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of the Lord descending like a dove and lighting, lighting upon him. And the voice from heaven saying, This is my Son, who I am well pleased. So here you have John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. Now, every one of us in the church, because now it's the voice of one, what? The Holy Spirit. So every one of us that are one in spirit, in spirit, should be, be all preparing for Jesus' last return where we meet him in the air because he comes back because now he has a church John the Baptist was raised up by God to bring to prepare people that Jesus was coming so they knew what was about to come and then they started to follow John and they would know John was sent from God because and John didn't do any miracles or anything because of when he spoke, they felt it in their spirit. They knew they, he carried a spirit of repentance. When John the Baptist would speak, people felt they, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. So John actually had a, 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 a part, a partial um, anointing on his life to bring people to um, conviction. And when he preached, they bowed, they came to baptism, they followed. That's another sign that God is with a man or a woman, that people come and they actually listen to what they're saying. So let's go to Matthew 16, 12 through 20. Is, and then, on, and I'm, this is a, another little part in Matthew where he talked about, Beware of the leaven of the bread of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And Jesus came from the coast in whom he was the Son of Man. And some of them that were, Thou art John the Baptist, Elijah, now we're going to be talking about what Jesus said he's coming to do. John came to prepare for Jesus. And then Jesus came to what? To build his church where the gates of hell will not prevail. And he said to them, who, some say you're this and some say that. And he said that Simon Barjona, blood is not revealed. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said to him, by this, was not come to you by man, by flesh and blood, by some doctrine. This came straight from heaven, is what he was saying. And I say unto thee that you are Peter upon this rock. He's not talking about Peter being the rock. He's saying upon this rock, this revelation of my church, this revelation of being hearing from heaven and being able to, and I will build my church on what? The revelation of Jesus Christ and the revelation of hearing from heaven. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I'll give thee the keys to the kingdom. And, and he says, I'm going to give the, my church the authority of the kingdom. And whatsoever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever they loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. That's earthly authority that Jesus came by his blood and his power to take back the authority that was the enemy had to give it to us, that belief. Then he charged his disciples that he tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ at that point. Because it was not time. So, we will be, God wants to reset us so we have power. And that we're doing anything. But a lot of people, 
are coming in the spirit of John the Baptist, but they think they are John the Baptist, or they think that we're, we're the Old Testament temple of the Pharisees and Sadducees. I'm talking about many people in the church. May, God made the church His original purpose. God's going to bring it back to its original state, back to its original purpose. Then we have Paul in Ephesians 2, 17 through 22. And he came and he preached peace unto you that were afar off, and then that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens and saints of the household of God. So there's a household of God. Now you have a household at home. You go home, you got dad, you got mom, you got brothers and sisters, relatives might come over. It's called a household. And then God has a household. And it's his, it's his church. It's his people. It's, it's, he has a household of God, which we, we are supposed to be um, living in it and protecting it. And, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a type of saying of what it is, of what we are God's house. And we're supposed to be part of it. We are the lively stones of, and the Bible says that, uh, you know, defile not your body, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So all of us together make the habitation of God in together as well. And then people say, that, oh, we are the church. That's, that's right. And it's also, God does also have um, government on the earth um, in a sense of he has order in um, bodily congregations and people will like to throw all that away as well when they try to get to this new spiritual thing where they begin to be taken out by the enemy and what I'm going to show you in the in the scriptures here because it says the household of God which is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone Jesus Christ the cornerstone is where it starts and the cornerstone is where you start to build so it's he and he the Bible also says that he is the rock and he is the foundation. And upon this rock you shall build that. That's, Jesus is the rock. And he says if you build on sand, wood, hay, and stubble, it'll be burned up. It'll go, storms will come, and it'll vanish. But whatever you built upon the rock shall stand. Whenever a storm comes your way or anything comes, and this is what he's talking about about him. And the whole building... Fitly framed together, groweth into a holy temple of God. And it says that we have access to the Spirit, to the Father. So we all should hear God. And at the same time, he's talking about the house of God. Three scriptures later, four scriptures later, he talks about the temple of the Lord. In whom you are builded together in the habitation of God through the Spirit. You all see that, right? So truth, we are... To never throw out the baby with the dirty bath water. This is why God is bringing us back to the foundation of the apostolic church in power. God still always has a government and order in God's word. When you know why people are struggling in ministry and with their relationships, they do not want to conform to the structure it breaks my heart. And it's spiritual pride. We see so many people striving and they have to have start this ministry and start that ministry. But God has an order and He has a government. And when we do not submit to godly order and things, it's not about a personal, this is about God's blessing. We end up striving and begin up being used by the enemy. And we begin up being, instead of an asset for God, we begin to come against Him and against his body, and against his spirit. And many are doing that today. And on media, you'll find that. And that's why God wants me to cry out to these people that they need to submit to the Holy Spirit because Satan comes as a, as a, to steal, kill, and destroy, and he comes to deceive. And if we are prideful, the, God says that you will be deceived. Because you, God says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. When you get out from God's hand, it, you, you, you're out in territory where you don't belong. God's hand is to protect us, cover us, and reach out and fight for us. And I'll show you why these things happen. 
So the Spirit believes that the mandate from God, John the Baptist's delusion. You see, the problem is John was a forerunner to Jesus and the New Testament church. This is existing today. There is never ever going to be a Third Testament church. Yes, God is coming against the harlot bride or against false churches or false, you know, Mormonism or Jehovah Witnesses, different things that aren't, but not the church. See, there's false things pertaining to be of God. That's different. And, and people know them already by their spirit because the spirit inside them doesn't bear witness and it's the spirit of the Antichrist and if they cannot see Jesus and, and see in the spirit, then you already know them. It's not really wasting time about them because people that are in them are deceived and if they want to know the truth, all they need to do is humble themselves and ask God. But if people end up in places that are totally not of God, it's because they chose not to really want the truth because God is love and if you humble yourself, and, if, and, and, and God, should, He's not going to let you be deceived. So these are people that are deceived because one thing, they want, they want what they want, or they, they've been deceived because of some different reasons, and God's going to uh, do something later to get a hold of them if they do have a good heart. But I can't see uh, these doctrinal things being deceived because people are wanting something else than what is actually in the Word of God. And... And God is exposing the pastoral church, which is unbiblical in structure. And He's exposing false grace and false love. But He's exposing it. He's not cursing His own church. But He's doing it in the Spirit. So we do have God ordained prophets and apostles that are bringing light to things that are out of order, bringing light to things that are in dis disorder, bringing light to things that have no power and that are dead. But He's not cursing but he's only restoring. He's bringing back into order. And God's going to be identifying the spirits in the church. First Timothy 4 says, Now speaketh expressingly, in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and command to abstain from meats which God has created and received with thanksgiving to them which believe and know the truth. For every creature is good and nothing to be refused and be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you put your brother in remembrance of these things, he shall be a good minister and nourished up in the words with faith. And of good doctrine, wherefore you has obtained, but refuse profane old wives' tales, exercise therefore rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable in all things. Having promised us life, that now it is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation. For we labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, our Savior, to all men, especially to those that believe. These things we command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but yea, be an example to the believers in word and conversation, charity, spirit, faith, and purity. Till I come and give attendance to the reading, exhortation, and doctrine. And this is him talking to, to his son in the faith, um, Timothy. Paul is talking to him because he's going through a hard time and people are coming against him and he's starting to question what he's doing and what he's and if he's doing the right thing and what did what did what did Paul do he Paul came to to give him uh, security and to um remind him of w what he was called to do and of who uh, he was called from, and right here he says, And do not neg neglect, neglect the gift that was given to thee by prophecy. By what? Prophecy the, is of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, because when, when Timothy knew, he wouldn't have went that far and started to do all those things unless he knew that he knew. And by the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Presbytery is um, church ministers or... Um, representatives, godly order, structure, by leadership, is what he's saying. He says, yeah, and it was witnessed by the leadership that God had you uh, around. And Paul was there. 
and should meditate on those things, and holy to them that is profiting and may appear upon. Take heed unto thyselves, unto the doctrine, and continue in them, for it is doing this shall save both thyself and them that hear you. So Paul, Paul was con, con, when who knows what letter he got from Timothy or somebody had come and told he we don't have the whole you know it'd be so interesting to get what Timothy said and Paul said and Paul well, we only have what we have so we have the Holy Spirit to show us what these things are meaning and being but obviously Paul was re, re, reassuring him of what he's doing and. And, and blessing him and telling him to keep going on. And you'll see that in many other the things that he's doing. Now let's go to 2 Peter 5, 1 through 11. Because I'm going to say about these things because now he talks about the elders which are among you. Exhort them as, as an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and be partakers of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking oversight, not by constraint, but willingly, not by filthy lucre, but by ready mind. I'm trying to establish that there's always structure when God does something. And these people think they're just fly off the wheel and God meets them in the middle of the night and now they've got this, their own ministry, but all they are is tearing things apart and doing things wrong. Now God has done that and God does that, but He does not work through fruits of these type of people. See, the devil comes also as an angel of light. And if you got, you got open doors in your heart and in your flesh and you're angry and you're mad and you've been abused or you've been misused or you can't stay in the church because of different things, but you know what? They might not have been the real one. That might not have been God's house. It might have been the devil's house. You never know. You need to seek God because he does have a truth. He does have a people and he does have a remnant that not, does not want to bow their knee to bail. And he does not have one perfect place. And he doesn't have one perfect person yet. And we're all, it says that he raised up the fivefold ministers so we all come into the full stature and the measure of Christ. But these people on the outside want to start poking on the inside because they don't want to conform to what God is doing in his church. And that's what we see going on all around us. And we understand like, wow, these people have so much word. They have so much wisdom in this. Side. But wow, there's just something wrong. The way they present themselves, the pride, the arrogance, they're the only ones. They always think, I am the chosen one. That type of attitude. And you see it all around you. Because they don't, God is not blessing that. And he says, neither being the Lord's over God's heritage, but being an example until when the chief shepherd shall appear and shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Likewise, younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, that all of you be subject one. And he's talking about in spirit, you know. And, and he's also talking about respecting elderly all the time. We need to do that. But when he's telling the elderly, he means somebody that's been ordained in, el in leadership as an elder in the spirit. You know, you can get saved at 50 years old, and you're not an elder in the church yet. You're still a baby in the church, but an elder, someone 25 got saved, and by 40, God, he's you know makes himself strong in the Word. God uh, blesses him and makes him an elder. So God's talking about spiritual things right here. And but in the in the in 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 the false denomination and stuff, they just do things by who gives the most money, who can help the church the most, who's been around the most, and they might never have picked up their Bible. See, it's not like that in the Spirit. So we got to see, start to see things in the Spirit, by the Spirit, from the Spirit, which Spirit we follow is the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. So, he says, A crown of glory that fades not away. Likewise, younger, submit yourselves to the elder, that you be subject one to another. And it's not saying overlord, it's subject listening to one another. And that's one thing people aren't doing either. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mind, that He may exalt you in due time. So, when you, when you might be gifted, talented, even have, a, have an office in the body of Christ, but if you don't humble yourself and you exalt yourself, and you run on your gift without being submitted to this Holy Spirit in the body of Christ, you're not going to go anywhere. And, and people are doing that all in, and you're like, you see some, some of the, oh wow, look at said, but you see something's not right. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. And be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, here's the thing right now, this is what's happening to so many renegades or so many mavericks out there, is this. The adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
And it's just being saying this, just after God is saying, humble yourself and let God exalt you. So what he's saying, when you start exalting yourself, this is when you get start to be devoured by the, by the devil. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Because if he could, he'd devour anybody. But he can't devour the humble. He can't devour those that are submitted to the ordinances of God, to the word of God, and to the governments of God. And, and let God use his prophets and people to speak to things and expose things. So many people see all these things wrong and they think they've they're been anointed to go start all these heresy hunter programs that they have and all these different things and they've not been sent by God and they go solo. You will look at all them. Most of them have nobody around. It's just them and God. And you got to realize, does God really work that way? Well, let's study in the scripture how he, how he looks and works because everything that he does is written in this word. To one point or the other, to one extreme, we can find out what he has and he's doing. And now he says, in the grace be unto all. And brother in the world, and are your foot steadfast in the faith, knowing that you accomplish what your brother has are in the world. But though God of grace has called us to eternal glory. Titus 1 5 says, For this cause we left create and set order the things that are wanting, and ordained elders in every city, and had been appointed. So every city. You might have a church. But it's not the church of God, and there's a full amount of people. But then you have a city, and you have a government of God. God in every city has somebody that's got some authority over that city. Because the Bible says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities in high places. And the Bible says that the apostolic and the authority over the spiritual realm in that city is not by a man's ordination. It won't be given by some man or some Bible school or some the- theological certificate if God has not called or ordained them. Because there's a special gift and these are ascension, ascension gifts from above. And God has given some to be apostles, some to be prophets, and some to be pastors, and some to be teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, so we all come into the full stature and measure of Christ. So God's fivefold ministry ministers are to grow and and we need to submit to the spirit in them and them but even if we have and if we're called to be that we need to let god uh wait on god to him to release us in that and and that's what ends up happening and i'm going to show you what's going on and let's read acts 2 27 through 30 for i have not shunned to declare unto you the counsel of god take heed therefore unto yourselves unto all of the flock over that which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which has, He has purchased with His blood. So it's not your church. It's not the apostle. It's God's church. But these renegades and these mavericks will come start to say, well, don't listen to man. It's not about man. But there's, there's a reason God has man speak to, for protection and direction. But you see, they weren't getting the attention that they wanted yet. So all of a sudden they come in against out of jealousy and different things, bringing disarray and bringing the enemy in their life, which doesn't have to be. Because what ends up happening is these people that come out of God's protection end up getting infected or rejected. And then they get more hurt and they're like, They don't understand it. So the enemy takes them and starts showing them things that the enemy wants them to see, but not what God wants to see. And it could even be the truth. It could even be stuff that's going on wrong in the church. It could be all these things. But see, if God doesn't show you them, then you don't want to see it. I only want to see what God wants to show me, good or bad. Because if I start to see what the enemy or the world wants me to see, or people that hate God want to see, then it's not what God wants me to see. Even though it might seem to be truth, it's not the ultimate truth because God's bringing us into all truth and the spirit of truth resides inside of us that will guide us into all truth. And it might look like it's the truth, but God said the word of God, it it looked like Jesus was some renegade himself. Oh, look at him coming with this new doctrine, pulling people away from the Jewish and the God of Abraham and I. But it was deeper. There was revelation. If people would have waited and seen it was for a good thing that God was doing. So we got to see that right here. And it says, departing shall. And it says this, and know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. 
also of your own selves shall men arise. Even inside the church, men shall arise per speaking perverse things to draw disciples after them. See, these same people are trying to come against what God's blessing and ordaining, saying those people are drawing people after themselves. But at the same time, they're trying to pull people to what they think to what they believe, and because they're not getting the attention or, or having their ministries not, not moving, to, they're really the ones drawing people to themselves. Because all God's doing is drawing people to, to, his, to his plan, to his vision that he's established. And God doesn't have a million visions going on. And every single person has a different vision. God has one vision. It's the heavenly vision, which is ordained from heaven. You'll see that in the book of Acts. Then we have Hebrews uh, 13. 5 through 18, by him therefore let us, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually, that there will be fruit in our lips, giving thanks to his name, but to good and communicate, forget not, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. Pray for us for and trust we have a good conscience in the things willing and live honestly. And let's just think about this. Okay, we have a big church. That was an ordained church. Not going to say any names. His dad, full of the Holy Ghost, is a lot smaller church. And then something happened to that church. And now we have 30,000 people listening to a message that's not really coming from heaven. But that's the people that are listening to that message, they either want that or they don't. So it's already obvious that people are going to follow what they want to hear. So if your whole, whole ministry is when people already know what's going on, God's going to get a hold of those people by one thing stripping them, by one thing shaking them, by one thing eventually if they're really His, He'll get a hold of them. But our whole, then these people get their whole life like, I can't believe people don't see this. Many people see it, but it's like someone wants something and if they're being deceived, it's because of the things that we said. They're following things of their own heart prosperity or whatever their desire is and it's not really the word and the truth they're going to sit in the congregation of other people that think and, and are like that so basically these people think that nobody knows all these things going on but they do but God's wanting to God wants to put inside of us what's really true is changing us from the inside through his power and the cross so, but even John the Baptist had disciples. What happened to them? Well, the maverick or the renegade spirit always is tearing down every, everyone that does not fit in their own, own perspective of their truth. It's an independent spirit. It's a, for example, an evangelist. So you meet an evangelist that's left the church because nobody's evangelizing and they just can't believe that it's like this. So they go off on their own and they're angry now. Now, everyone that doesn't have evangelism on the first of their mind is all wrong. This is what this independent spirit, although there's so much right about needing to evangelize and do these things, and a prophet in the church, well, nobody's listening and all this, and then they just go out on their own and they become a long range of prophet, but there's no blessing. They're always in need. Nobody wants to hear what they're saying. See, that's, that's, that's what happens in this the spirit, yeah, there's gift, there's, an, there's even uh, calling on some of these people, but they have not waited on the Lord, and they don't move in the spirit of love and truth. They move in, a, in their own spirit of, of anger and, and rejection and, and pride, going to prove in themselves. These are child, they're children of God that have never received healing or deliverance and have not, and, and have not passed the rejection test Everything they do has leaven of proving themselves that they are from God. Rooted in pride and insecurity. So Satan gets a hold of a wound or jealousy or anger and, they, they, and, and the enemy works through that to stop the blood flow to, to go throughout the body. See, all of us are supposed to um, be... Uh, what do they call that? 
joints that supply to everyone's need. So everyone in the body has some type of part to edify and to lift up the body. And we're not always concerned on what is outside of the body because our concern is protecting the body. So we get this thing as, well, don't you know? And like all these things, so these things birth up. So they begin to not see what really needs to be seen. Such as this person writes this five-page letter because the maverick spirit takes, took this person out, now saying everybody's going to hell in this. Uh, the whole, uh, you need to be born again. These are things that came to me in the mail this week. And all of you uh, worship the, don't worship the tree, the book, but worship the spirit of God, the, uh, uh, Jesus. And it's like all the things we preach, they've heard it and followed for years, but all of a sudden they never wanted to submit. So everything's might not be God, or this isn't God. So now all of a sudden, even the good places of truth become even, so they become the only one. And that's what's very dangerous, because there, God has a church, and He has a people, and He's going to have uh, every tribe and every tongue going to call on His name, and He's raising up a bride for, for, for Jesus' return. No matter what it looks like, there, He has a people, and He has a body of believers, and they're strong. And He wants them to come together. But in one spirit, and in one truth and one doctrine of, of the Word of God, not in uh, denominational rules and all these different things. So, but there is that. But these people get so far in jealousy and all these things, they start to even come against the, the, the remnant of God that's, 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 that's striving for even the, the perfection of, of, of serving Him and pointing people to Jesus all the time. But because of jealousy and because nobody listens to their, their Facebook videos are live they get very angry and they get very hurt instead of knowing that god will breathe on there and, and and not even realizing jesus is the most rejected person not because anybody listens doesn't mean it's not from god so the enemy comes in and 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 and, and makes its abode in the wounds of these people and they become mavericks instead of 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 sent ones of god and I'm hoping that these people, they will listen to these things and, and, and take heed to this so God can heal them and use them and bless them. Because they'll always be in need. Because God's not going to bless the mess that they're creating. So Satan gets a hold of these wounds. And they're still a child of God, but they're, they have a mindset of an orphan. Because they don't have a church family. Now God's their father but now he's this god of anger and everyone else is wrong and you better so they start to get in this legalistic vein in their behavior with people and even in their the way they communicate with people and i bet you guys are thinking of people right now and hope to god it's not and it's not going to be you or someone so to them submission is control correction means i'm not good enough i'm never good enough so when they get the truth, little or what they have, they don't use it to edify or bring light. They use it to defend themselves or to point out that they know something that you don't know. That's their whole thing. They get one revelation that so this minister hasn't preached yet and they want to exalt that and say, ah, why don't you know this by now? Or why didn't it's, And you feel it and you're like, oh, that's pretty good, but okay. It's just something I, God didn't show. And they make you, if you, you should have known this. Why don't you know that? Or don't you know that it's the, the trend or different things? And all of a sudden you start, and they, instead of making you feel like you're being blessed by finding out something new, you start to feel, they make you feel like, oh, am I, God's mad at me? Or am I losing my anointing? Or am I getting lost? Their intentions is not, it's all about them. And then they basically make you feel like God's not with you or something. And that's not what ministers are supposed to do. Ministers are called to reconcile you to God for whatever means it takes. Through repentance, through um, edification, through scripture that will secure them when the devil's lying to them. Whatever it does to get their heart back with the one that called them. And it's not about man. So they will use the letter, the Bible, without the Spirit to hurt people with the Word. They're using the Word to defend themselves and they're rationalizing their distinct, 
their distinction instead of using the word to set people free. Kind of like the Pharisees and the Sadducees were always trying to do with Jesus. They, they're not trusting anyone in this, in this is not, and not realizing that they're not trusting God. One mistake and you're out. Kind of like, kind of like, so they become their own protector. They're the elite in their own mind and they hear straight from God more than everyone else can. They become survivors. If they make any allegiances, it's only temporarily because they are long rangers. Pride stops them and, and, and maturing and pride and rebellion are those, are, remember, those are the twin towers they live in. That's Satan actually giving them false security. They're constantly straining at gnats, missing the big picture, unity and love. Looking for perfection in everything and everyone while they are so unperfect. Wrong name. Wrong kind of music, wrong kind of clothes, pr wrong way to pray, wrong symbols, wrong preaching. Always something wrong so they don't have to listen to any submission. But nobody's perfect. So they get, then they make themselves the only thing, everything right. And then, and then you look at them, there's so many things wrong. You could point out, but you're like, that's not my job. <laughs> you just want them to be blessed. And these are all fig leaves hiding their wounds, hurts, angers, and rejection, and, and their sin. God is about body ministry. They will say um, they, they are a special hand. When Paul clearly said, can you say, I have no need of the eye, and so on, become... So let's read 1 Corinthians 12 what Paul said about the body. Now concerning spiritual gifts, let it not be ignorant. Some were carried away with dumb idols, even as we were led. Therefore give and understand, no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And when, they, when people, supposedly believers, curse other believers, they're cursing Jesus. Because if we're His body then they're actually coming against Him. Wherefore, give you to understand that by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, but all have different administrations, but the same Lord. And to all the different operations, but the same God, which worketh in all, all in all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given every end to profit with all. So this gift is not profiting, it's separating. It's, it's not making... How many know if, you, if, if someone's an Aaron and this person is very humble and always seeking God and God might use someone to go point something out. He's not coming to beat them up about it because they've been praying and they want to know, they want to be in perfection. So God's not going to come and blast a Facebook page about someone that's saying, God, help me, and come to them and correct them in that way and manner if they're really seeking God. Now, someone else might come in that manner, and then you have all this civil war going on in, in the body because of pride. But that's not the way God works. And sometimes God will leave man out to deal with man, and man will come against man, and you'll see all these sparks flying and edifying nothing, and it's making the church look bad, and that's not of God. But for sure, they'll make you say, oh, I'm a God because of the truth has been contaminated through, through, through a dirty well of a dirty heart or pride or, or a jealousy. And that brings the spirit of Cain upon people. And so what was once uh, in the house of the God now becomes a spirit of murder and hate. And then God says, you cannot say you love God and say you hate your brother, because if you say you love God and hate your brother, then you're a liar. Because how can you say you love your brother who you can see and hate God who you can't see? So basically, and God says the shame of their nakedness is being repealed. But all you see is, wow, what powerful anointing, or not really anointing, but what powerful gift and word and 
all they could if they would just submit it unto the Holy Spirit. But they go out there and they're no, and, and, and get nowhere. And they, they fight against the wind. And, that, and, and, and God wants to heal them. And another spirit, another gift of healing, the same spirit that talks about miracles and talks about tongues and all these gifts. But then it goes on to say, for the body is one member and has, in verse 12, and many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we are baptized into one body. And see, we can all be part of the body, but then we also go back to the fleshly thing where there is order and government and submission. And we've been going over this because this is the main thing God's been showing me that's really messing up because people and all about this media fame and wanting to have the, you know, all these likes and the world makes you, you know, everyone wants their message to go viral. All these wants and desires of the flesh and of pride are, are dividing the body of Christ. And then and people that have, have not things that are like that and they, they feel like that, that that they end up hating the very thing they're supposed to be discerning is the Lord's body, one another, not, not long ranger. And Jesus had, right when God called Jesus into ministry, the first thing he did was start to get disciples around him, right away. Now, God raised him up, but he wasn't ministering. He wasn't calling out things. He was not... Uh, he was Christ, but he was being raised up, and he grew in favor with man and, and, and stature with God, in favor with man and with God, even Christ himself. And then he got baptized, went in the wilderness, and then, but what was the first thing when he got out of the wilderness? He started to get people around him, to follow him, to be around him, right? The problem with these other ones, they try to get people to get around them, but it's for their own demonic cause. So... We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, for the body is not one member. It's right here, but many. Should the foot shall say that I, because I'm not the hand, I have no need, need of that in the body? Is it therefore not of the body? And can the ear say that because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body? Is therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where is the hearing? And if the whole body were so... and that God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. And if a member takes himself out of the body and sets himself, you're never going to have nothing. And many people are doing that because they, how they're looking at all the denominations or they're looking at the wrong things. But just look to Christ and let Him set you. Let Him lead you. But now are many members but one body. You cannot say the hand does not have need again or the foot have no need of thee. No, the, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. The members of the body which think to be less honorable upon those who stow more honor that there will be all com uncommonly parts have more abundant com commonness. For our commonest parts have no need, but God has tempered, God has put the body together, having given more abundant honor in which part which lacked. That which should be no schisms, no divisions, no long rangers in the body, but that the members should have the same care, the same love, the same affection, the same desire for one another as they have even for themselves. This shows Christ. And God does have some strong prophets, but boy, when they speak, there's people repenting. Church gets on their knees, and it's not an every minute, every hour, every day uh, a job. It's a, a one-time assignment, and even if it's a body of Christ assignment, it's done through um, humility and truth. And whether a member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Why? Because they're one. There's no long rangers. There's no mavericks. Yeah, they might come around the church, but they're not connected to the church. They show up. They listen to videos. They get part of network groups on Facebook and everything. But they never really come in agreement or, or, or one flow. They're just there to judge, to look, to say, oh, I'm part of this group. Because they know deep down you have to be connected 
to the body of Christ. So they act like they're connected, but all they are there is in presence in name, to be shown up with a like, or to, to have their self uh, tune into a, 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 a media Bible study with a bunch of religious people sitting around a table and say, oh, I'm part of this group. And they've never even been there. Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets. Third, he set them in the church. So if the church was not a place, then how could he set them in? And then he set them in the people. This is we are the body of Christ. Some people say, well, we are the church. It's, it, that's right to an extent, but God also talks about the church of Ephesus, the church of this place, the church. And he also talks about they went from church, house to house. And they also talked about in the book of Acts about the church. So it's ecclesias means the, um, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But also God has, he said, do not um, forsake the assembling together. So there's a congregation. Even Moses ha walked within the congregation. So God's talking about us being the body of Christ, but we also, he's also talks. So, so they take themselves out of that and say, well, we are, and the Holy Spirit is, you know, I only hear the Holy Spirit. Well, all you're doing is saying, well, you're, you only hear the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit said not to do that. So you say you hear the Holy Spirit, but the, you're not listening to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit said you can't just hear from me. He said he'll guide you unto all truth. And he said, and he has it in the word how, how he'll do it. Not only, and he doesn't do it solo. So when you say you're only listening to the Holy Spirit, you're a liar because you're actually denying the word that the Holy Spirit was, the word that was brought forth by Jesus Christ and the apostles inspired by the Holy Spirit. So you're, what you're saying is, I only hear the Holy Spirit the way I want to hear Him, and everything else that He says, I will neglect it. That's the way of see what you say when you say, I only listen to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit doesn't bring division or discord. For all apostles, or all prophets, or all teachers, or all workers of miracles, God has given us our all... All gifts of healing. Do all speak in tongues? So earnestly the best gifts and show yourselves more in an excellent way. So we have this special ministry from God, chosen ones. They remain stuck. They pretend to hold a special secret from God, but they never say it, and they form divination and diversion to divert people from what God's wanting to do. So in the wilderness they live, they eat, they sleep, and they reproduce. They're John the Baptist that never come out of the wilderness. Some think Paul walked alone. Everybody, oh, Paul walked. No, he, Paul didn't walk alone. He walked in the flesh alone, but he had churches everywhere. He communicated. Paul only walked alone until he got to the next city where he established again, where he set order again, where he talked about how the body of Christ is supposed to be again. So see, they see what they want to see in the Bible, where it looks like truth, but ultimately it's just a part of the truth. It's a part of the Word of God. Do you see it? Well, Paul walked along. Well, Paul didn't have an airplane, and if he did, he'd go to visit those places a lot faster, and he would have been in them a lot more frequently because he loved them. And he, and he wrote letters to continue to tell them to stay in one spirit, to submit to one another. They're all in the letters that Paul say. So people are going to say, well, Paul did, but he really didn't. And if you look at today, there's no excuse not to be in communion with one another. And he said... So the thing that Paul walked alone, but he did it and avoid, the, and he established the gifts and the order, and he called it the church. Some would say today the body of Christ. Even John had disciples. John didn't continue to walk alone when he came out of the wilderness. He got disciples. What did John's disciples do when John died? Well, let's read John. I'll be closing real soon here. John 1, 29-41, in the day John sees Jesus coming, and it goes on to talk about him, and he says, and John bare record, I'm going to jump down to 32, and the same Spirit, saw the Spirit descending up from heaven like a dove upon him. And when knew him not, but he that sent him, he baptized with water, but the same come unto me, said that, the, that what in the Spirit descending, 
Okay, on whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same which is baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bore record that this is the Son of God. What did John do? He prepared the way, then he pointed people to Jesus. We need him. You're pointing, you need, if you're pointing people away from the body of Christ, you're not of God. And he saw and bore record of this, that he was the Son of God. And again, the next day, after John stood, and two of his disciples. So John had two, two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, and he said, Behold, to his disciples. He didn't point him to him, I'm John, you know, wait till I die, or I'm going to... He said, Behold. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Go. Real men and women of God will put you right into Jesus. Always pointing you to Jesus. Always pointing you to Jesus. Not to their self, not to their distinctions, not to their wounds, not to their rights, not to their causes, but to Jesus. And the two disciples that heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What you seek? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? Because they wanted to stay with him. And he said unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw he dwelt and abode. And him that day, for it was about the tenth hour, and one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. And he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Now, now Luke 10, 1 through 12. Look at John. God doesn't send one maverick out. Look right here. And these things, I'm trying to see how, 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 how you to see that God never does what they say he's doing. The Lord appointed a 70. Also, he sent them two by two. That, what is that? That's four, right? He sent them always in a company of people. When God goes starts a church, he doesn't just take one man with, with, with a vengeance on what's going on wrong. He actually bursts them out and he sends them. And then two, collect two, and then and going on mission trips. See, these, 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 these mavericks still have a, a megaphone in, in the city, but they don't have anyone around them. They go place to place, but nobody's with them. They're the only ones. And, and they struggle all the time because they don't submit to, to godly order because they're the only ones right. Everyone should be doing it their way. Why, you know, this is the way to do it. I'm sent by God. Nobody else is evangelizing. So, I'm, so you need to pay attention to me kind of thing. It's all out of wounds and insecurity. When God could use evangelists, pastors, and be blessed by the church, by the real church, be financed by the real church, be covered and, 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 and expand, they can never come in because they're long rangers. They're mavericks. They're all out there doing good, but not bearing much fruit. Doing things that a lot of people aren't doing. People are like, wow. And they like the attention. Wow, look at you. Wow. But they're struggling in every area of their life. I don't want that to be anybody that's listening or anybody in this house or anybody in our church in Brazil. Be a maverick. Truly the great, he says, truly the harvest is great, but send forth, but laborers are few. I pray for the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest. Carry no personal script. It talks about this and go in, in peace. And then it talks about in the same hour. Because when God sends you if, you, if they come against you, they're coming against Him. If what you say they don't believe because God is sending you, He's going to speak through you. But if you send yourself, sometimes it's God, the Word, the letter maybe, without the Spirit. See, you never know. And it might sound right, but when God sends you, He will speak through you. And, and He'll send you even to your family, even to other places. And when He does that, even it's not just to nations, He'll send you to someone in the grocery store. But when He sends you, and I'm not saying you're always going to have a team of people just to do one little assignment. I'm talking about when it's a, when it's a ministry because these people that don't get received, they have to get a name and, that, and they have their ministry now. Now you need to sow into this ministry. But you're like, I don't want to sow into that. For some reason, God's not moving me to sow into that because something's wrong. And, and then so they have their own uh, sending out 
which is not of the blessing of God. And then they, they're always striving, and they begin to walk with the spirit of Cain. Same, go into a house, remain eating, labor is not worthy of his hire. Is, is, uh, the labor is worthy of his hire. Go from house to house. And when God sends you also, it says right here, he'll take care of you. Take care of their food, your raiment, everything. But so whatever city you enter and you're not received, go your way out of the streets to the same say, even the very dust that cleaveth against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But say unto you that it'll be more tolerable in the day of Sodom for that city. That's the, that's the weight you carry when God sends you. That's the authority is amazing when God sends you. And you're, you have a full assurance that it doesn't matter if they receive it or not. You know you've been sent by God and what you say is from God and it doesn't matter anymore. In Mark 6, 6 and 13, it says it like this, the household of unbelief. And he went round about villages teaching and he called the twelve. And here's another. And he began to send them forth, forth by two and two. Not one guy that's mad at the church. Now I'm going to start my ministry. Very interesting, isn't it? And he gave them power over unclean spirits. And then they have power. A lot of these people, they got no power. You're like, where's the power? A lot of preaching, a lot of teaching, but where's the power? Well, if God sends you, he's going to back you with his power. Amen? Everybody can stand up. And this maverick, here's the definition, a person who shows independence of thought and action, especially by refusing to adhere to policies, to a group, or to things they belong to. And that's the church, the government of God. We belong to the household of God. God has order. He has ways that He wants us to submit. He does not just because people think, oh, I got saved and I got mad in this church. Well, you know what? God, seek God, humble yourself. He'll put you around people of the like mind and, and, and right thing that will, are there to help you. The church is not evil, and, but there are evil people and everything. does not mean God is evil. And God is not angry at, 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 at every person. Just because one place is not doing the right thing. Unbranded animal, especially the calf, separated from his mother, tra traditionally considered a lone descender, an intellectual, someone that takes their own stand against everybody. A rebel, a radical dissenter, an individualist, a protester, a heretic, a descendant. And some would say some prophets are like that. Even John the Baptist, even John the Baptist, he looked all that. But he was a rebel, but he was God's rebel. And he was coming against sin. He was coming against all the things the Bible said, you see. And God was not blessing the old system anymore because Jesus says, it was all for that. But he, he, he was only exposing people's sin. He wasn't even, even, even uh, doing that. But John the Baptist, but see, now everybody thinks they, they're, they're John the Baptist now because the church is like it is. But this is God's church. This is God's, and it's up to God to, to fix it. And God is going to use men, but He's not going to use people building up all these things against what He has established. He's going to use prophets and apostles to tear up things, but not tear up people. To tear up things, but not te to, to, to divide people. And it says, if you're, if you're not gathering, you're scattering. He's not going to use people to scatter people away from the truth. And then what ends up happening is, they get turned over to the devil themselves. And all of a sudden, they don't even know where they come and where they go, where they've been, what's going on. So, Father, we pray right now. We pray against this spirit of, of, of the maverick spirit, God. This, these people that have this, this fantasy about being John the Baptist or one of the two witnesses in the Bible, they think they're here doing it right now, calling out fire. Father God, we just pray, Lord, that there will be a discerning of spirits, discerning of what spirit they come from.
And Father, as we get bold and come and we come against the spirit of Jezebel and we come against the spirit of Ahab in the church, and all those things, there's a way to do it and there's an order and God backs it and there's fruits worthy of repentance, Father. We pray that these fruits abound in your ministry, Father God, that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in pulling down strongholds. So Father, we pray that you visit and you get a hold and you heal all these uh, ones in disarray in disobedience that are afraid to trust you, God, and to trust your ways, that you're not a long ranger, that you have a body, that you have a people, that you have a church, and you're raising up your church where the gates of hell will not prevail. And even though it doesn't look like it does, and if it's not, and if they don't repent, they'll just eventually just disappear, like many churches are all the time. It's not something that we have to make happen. Because God will get a hold of those people that want Him. And He'll have a people that meet at the cross. And they pick up the cross and deny themselves. And they'll walk in love and they'll strive to live in peace with the brother. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank You that You are perfect. And You're raising up us into Your perfection. In Jesus' name. Amen. That was coming.